Hey everyone, Sean Reynolds here. Hope you guys are having another blessed and wonderful day. I want to talk about aliens, aliens in this in this video. It's going to be this is an interesting one, and um, of course they this message <clears throat> ties in with my last few videos, and so I highly recommend you go watch them. It's it's really a series. Uh, I'm, I'm building off of what I've already said in my last videos. So we know about the three Earth ages, and we know about um, how there was creatures like dinosaurs, Neanderthal, all these things that lived during this first Earth Age, uh, which was, and all these creatures were wiped out, right, during this global flood that occurred during this first Earth Age. Now this is, at, at the end of this flood, that's when we see the Ice Age occurring. Um, that, that was around 13, 14,000 years ago. It was the most recent uh, global Ice Age, right? Uh, where did all the water come from for this Ice Age? You know, uh, it was it came from the flood, the global flood that I'm telling you about, the flood that ended the first Earth Age. The second Earth Age, which is the one we're living in now, right? Um, that started with Adam and Eve and the creation of, of the, I, I would call it the recreation of, of the world that we see now. Uh, but he used the same world, the same material, the same elements that was, that he had used from the first Earth Age and just remade this Earth Age we have now. Essentially, the, the world was flooded. And when the waters, when God divided the waters, right, as is described in Genesis, and uh, then we have dry land appear, or reappear, we should say. And so, <clears throat> once you understand the context of all that stuff, and then you understand I said I wasn't going to get into numbers. This video might be a little long, but it's it, it's well worth it. I promise you. But I, I guess real quick, I should get into into some numbers here, and I and I want to stress that I might end up going. It, it, this is such a deep subject, actually, that I may end up going and making a separate video just on this topic. But I'll try to scratch it, scratch on it a little bit here. So if we read in Second Peter, which also tells us about the three Earth Ages. Um, we see that it is written very clearly, and it says it, I believe it even twice, it, it confirms it twice, that one, one day, one day to God, one day in the spirit realm, right, is the same as a thousand years here in this material realm here on earth. So one day to God is a thousand years to man. Now, this is important, especially when you consider the context in which it is said right it is actually said right after in second peter it describes that god created the world uh, you see what i'm saying and it, it describes the days in which god created the world i should say the seven days this is the recreation um so when it's when, when second peter is telling us that god created the world in seven days and he rested of course on the seventh day so really six days you know but it's a whole week seven days all together uh, it's telling us very clearly in this context, and there's no other reason for it to even be there, mind you, that when it says in Genesis that it took seven days, you know, for God to create the world and then he rested, um, it, it's talking about days according to God, according to the spirit realm, which felt like one day to him. But on earth in the material realm which he was creating right it felt like a thousand years per day so in reality what really happened was you, you can see it in two different points of views according to god in the spirit realm yes seven days went by and it was fast but according to the material realm and the perception of time that we have it was seven thousand years that went by okay and this, it makes so much sense and it makes things, it, it, you see, it, it explains everything that these archaeologists and these secular scientists and all these people, these theories that they come up with. The thing about it is when you understand the Holy Bible in accurate context, it, it, it answers their questions. They ask things like, why, um, you know, I don't, it's such a deep subject. Um, 
a lot of things happened around 13, 14,000 years ago, right? The global ice age. Uh, and, they, and that's also um, when we start seeing remnants of people, civilizations of people appearing. Um, and, and they've recently found uh, burial sites and stuff, r remnants of civilizations of people who existed even before this 14,000 year mark, before the ice age. And that's where um, we have to understand the first earth age because that's some of the creatures uh, that existed during that earth age, you see. But now that we're living in the second earth age, um, we understand that there was this great flood that divided this, the two earth ages. And then God stepped in and he recreated, he wiped out the old existence and then he recreated everything we have now. You see and if you don't understand that that actually happened these secular scientists believe in evolution they believe that, that there was no separation that the creatures <coughs> that 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 we all evolved from creatures that swam up out of the sea or whatever um, millions of years ago hundreds of millions of years ago billions of years whatever numbers they say because they don't understand the divide there. The first earth age, God created and said, let there be. And yes, there was all these creatures that existed during this age. But then, and we don't know how long that, it could have been billions of years, that first earth age. We don't know. And then God brought an end to that age and drowned everything out. That's why we can still see the remnants buried under the ground. They're, they're fossils and some of the artifacts of these civilizations they call them people that we evolved from but really it's the it's the neanderthal type people and and i'm going to get into some more here later on but it's these these creatures that existed during this first earth age most some i will say see this is where i'm going to get to uh god himself yahweh created but you have to understand that some of these creatures now were hybridized creations. And this is where, okay, but first I'll get to that. Um, and so all this stuff going on during the, you know, when you understand that we didn't just evolve from, and we're not just all connected to the same, you know, we people and uh, a lot of the, the animals that we have on the earth today, God created these things, you know, around, uh, so, again, we have to look at the days of creation in terms of 7,000 years altogether, right? And so God said, let there be any on the first day. When was that? Well, that was around 13,000 years ago. That started right after the, sec the first earth age came to an end. This is the beginning of the second earth age, right? The, so how do I know that that was around 13,000 years ago? Not only does it line up with archaeology, but listen, 7,000 years. It took 7,000 years, according to our perspective, for God to, to create slash recreate the world. 7,000 years. That means that between the time when God said, let there be on day one, and God said, let there be, and he was happy with on day six, that was 6,000 years, according to our perspective, that had gone by. And then he rested on the seventh day, so 7,000 years, right? So there we have a number of 7,000 years. And so some of you are asking, well, where do you get the 13,000 years from? Well, I'll tell you. Because after the seventh, okay, we'll get back at 7,000 years of creation on the, on the seventh day God rested. What happened after that? What was the eighth day? Or let's look at it in terms of weeks. What was the second week? Because it didn't just end there. God didn't just create everything and then rest on the seventh day and everything in. No, we've been on earth how many years since then? Well, the Bible tells us it's been around 6,000 years. Okay? Not only that, but archaeology. When you start seeing that the certain races, certain groups of people, and this is such a broad subject, you see, I, I hope to be able to cover it all. But when you, it, it makes sense of why certain groups of people have been on this planet longer than other groups of people. And I'll get back around to all of this. You see, and, and it makes everything make sense. 
Um, and, and I'm talking about it according to archaeology. You, uh, the, you know, I'm, I'm taking everything into account here. You see, that's, that's the only way to actually find what actually makes sense and is true, you see. And so all these things, um, so as I said, uh, 7,000 years, creation slash rested on the seventh day, that's 7,000 years, plus 6,000 years, which was when, um, uh, this is when the, 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 the second week started after God created re slash recreated everything the second week started this is all part of the, still part of the second earth age that we're still living in now okay this second earth age has been 13,000 years so far okay and and so we know that it's been 13,000 years because you just add six plus seven right? 7,000, 8,000, 9,000, 10,000, 11,000, 12,000, 13,000 years. Okay? So that's how we know um, that it's been 13,000 years. Now, the thing that uh, we have to... Wow, it's such... So many things I have to get back to and, and talk about. Holy cow. Um, this is why I spend so much time writing all these articles that you can go and read on on you uh, on Facebook, okay? Because I go into more detail and I can word things and give you exact Bible verses and all this stuff, and it makes it just makes more sense. Those who have been following me for a while know, okay? Uh, so I hope you understand where I get the thirteen thousand years from. Okay, now uh, as I said, I'm only just I'm going to touch on that. Now we're going to get back to what aliens to the point of the message okay as i said i'm going to be talking about aliens so okay after the um second earth age began right which was following the ice age the global flood this is when god said let there be in genesis 1 okay um we see god recreating everything including man and mankind Including Adam and Eve and the other races of mankind. Okay, that's that's a key thing you have to remember here. I will explain more of this probably in another video. But um, and and so you see that as time goes by, um, you gotta bear with me. I'm this is a lot. Um, Lucifer, Satan right the serpent the fallen angel serpent who tempted adam and eve in the garden okay he fell and one third of the angels who followed him fell of course during that first earth age that's what brought that first earth age to a close okay now that's so that's why he is who he is this evil person this evil individual fallen angel slash serpent okay uh that's that's why the, now we understand who his backstory a little bit all this thing these things happened during the first earth age i'm going to go into more detail in a minute but that's why he was there to to tempt eve and adam in the garden and and because his backstory is that he used to be god's right hand angel and then he got jealous wanted to be like god and so he uh convinced one third of god's angels to rebel and god kicked them out of heaven now they still they're still act in the spiritual realm until a certain point when they're thrown into the bottomless pit, which I'll get into. Which they have been thrown in the bottomless pit, arguably for around uh, two thousand years now. I believe uh, the the when Jesus Christ died on the cross, as part of what he did, he threw them in the bottomless pit because you see that uh, when Jesus was on earth before the crucifixion, he was tempted by Satan in person. After that, you don't see that anymore. In fact, that uh, that's part of what Jesus Christ did. He he can he um, through Satan and one and the one third of fallen angels who before this had access to the spiritual realm and the material realm, right? But not the heavenly realm where God lives and where New Jerusalem is, or you know the heavenly realm. Um, so th so at this point, that's when they're thrown in the bottomless pit. And it says in Bible prophecy that they will be released, okay, during the end times to rule for five months along with the Antichrist, the Um And so until that, these, that final five months, 
Satan and one third of the fallen angels are locked in the bottomless pit. And as I said, they have been for the last 2,000 years. But before then, okay, so between 2,000 years ago and, and, and uh, 13, 14,000 years ago when Satan and one third angels fell, right, following the, the, the beginning of the second earth age, uh, that means that Satan and one third of the angels had access to the spiritual and physical realm, just not heaven, you see, not, the, not through the gates of heaven. And so that's why Satan was there to tempt Adam and Eve in the garden. And that was his, uh, his agenda. You see, he, was, he had a mission. Why was, what was his mission? This backstory explains it all. That was his mission, to bring down God's perfect pure creation. And I'm about to make it make more sense here. What did, what did Satan do? As I said in the other videos, he had, he convinced them to have sexual intercourse. It's not the sex that was, that was the bad thing. God created man to have, uh, to procreate, but, um, but not with fallen angels. That's the thing. God said, don't touch that family tree of fallen angels. The forbidden fruit that you're not allowed to go to and touch is you're not, no matter how beautiful and tempting this, uh, this angel and his uh, fallen angel uh, comrades are because they will be beautiful and tempting no matter how beautiful and tempting they are do not be tempted and don't fall to them just avoid them but sure enough here comes Satan the serpent strutting in there and it's all sensuality read when you understand the original Hebrew it's all sensuality everything that happened in the garden it's all it's a parable okay Satan convinced Adam and Eve to have a threesome with him and that was his goal to hybridize but keep this in mind to hybridize God's pure creations and sure enough he hybridized he did not succeed in hybridizing um, Abel because Abel was a pure seed from Adam and Eve but he did succeed in hybridizing Cain who was of that that unpure seed between him and Eve now and then uh, a Cain killed Abel, and then they were blessed with Seth, who again was a pure seed between Adam and Eve, not not Satan, not a fallen angel. And so, but I talked about that in other videos. So that's that's the reason why he did that to, he to hybridize, and he's still doing it today. He wants that. That's what all these chemicals are for. That's why they're pushing all this corruptness. I, you just put the pieces together. You know what I'm talking about. He, his, his goal has always been to take God's perfect, pure creations and hybridize them, turn them into ugly, terrible, sinful things that have bad side effects. That's the thing. Everything that Satan does has bad things, uh, bad strings attacked, attached. It will bring death, destruction, fear, anger, hate, uh, pain, like you can't believe. All these things, you know... That, that come with following and being tempted with with Satan and, and his hybridization agenda. And so that was his goal in the garden to hybridize and he succeeded through Cain, okay? But before then, like I said, Satan been on earth doing things before then, okay? Satan was kicked out 13, 14,000 years ago. The garden of him was only 6,000 years ago. So all that time, he and his fallen angels were on earth slash in the spirit realm, wreaking havoc, doing terrible, evil things. What was their agenda since day one? To hybridize God's pure creations. And so that's what was happening. That's what was happening during this first earth age. That's why I said that some of the creatures, I don't know how many, you know, were created by God, were good, pure creations. God created dinosaurs and he created things the way that they were supposed to be. But then here comes Satan along. And what did he do? He started hybridizing God's perfect creations. He started mixing things together that should not have been mixed together. And that's why that's when we start seeing these these weird abominational creatures like the like some of these Neanderthal missing link type creatures. Uh, some of these uh, alien, and that's what I'm getting to, some of these alien looking creatures, the, the bones that they dig up today. Um, like, I, you gotta go and do your research. This is extra biblical research, but go and see for yourself. This is objective truth. They are always digging up skeletons and remnants and bones all over the earth that they cannot explain. These creatures that 
they cannot explain what they are, where they came from. I'm talking giants up to 30 feet tall. Yes, they found bones 30 feet and over tall of people. That's how tall they were. And little creature type things with big heads and, and six fingers, all these, they don't know what, how to explain these things. And you gotta weed out a lot of, there's a lot of fake stuff out there, but, but I'm talking about the real stuff. I'm talking about the true stuff. You can go back in history. This has been going on forever. They've been doing this. The Smithsonian has been hiding evidence that, oh my gosh, they've hid so much evidence from the world. Uh, and, and a lot of people are in on it. The Clintons, a lot of people are in on this, okay? That's all I can say about that right now. They've hid all this information from the world. But you can go and go to and trace back some of the old writings and documents, and that's what people like me do. That's why I know for a fact that what I'm saying is true, because I, I realize people have been saying this for all, for since the beginning, the, all these things. There have been a small group of people like me to, to see what's actually happening and stand up and expose it. And I'm going and seeing what they're saying as well as the evidence that they were talking about. And it's damn true. Okay? You can't believe in the propaganda and all this crap that, that they're pushing. These creatures did exist. And I'm telling you where they came from. So, like I said, aliens. We can't say that... Okay, let me... I'm gonna try to, let's turn into a long video, but I'm gonna try to make this as short as possible. That's what all this is boiling down to. I know I've touched on other subjects, but uh, hopefully I'll be able to answer any questions you have. And, and like I said, I might make a few more videos to expound more on some of this stuff. You probably have a lot of questions by, by now, I'm sure. But um, when it comes to the alien aspect, this is what I want really want you to understand here. A lot of Christians will tell you and, and, and I'm not talking bad about them because I used to be one of them. We'll tell you that aliens are fallen angels. But listen to me, how are they fallen angels if since 2,000 years ago, fallen angels, and, and including Satan himself, have been physically locked away in the bottomless pit in chains? The Bible verses that talk about this specifically say they're bound in chains until the day when they are uh, allowed to be released during the end times for the final five months okay so um so if if they're bound in chains and they have been all this time then what are these alien creatures that we see uh evidence of all the who's flying all these ufos and stuff that we see okay here's here's something else um you know, the, the skulls, like I tell you, that they found and they keep digging up, these unexplainable creature hybrids, most of them, we can assume, have been completely wiped out over the years, either through the global flood that, that occurred during the first and second Earth Age or, or the flood of Noah, which was another time. You see the flood of Noah. What was happening? Go read Genesis and, and uh, Leviticus when it describes the giants, the people so tall that it made the Israelites feel like grasshoppers. Uh, how and it specifically says the sons of God, which is which in this context was talking about angels. They went and it says they saw that the women were beautiful, and they went and had intercourse with them, and they produced hybrid offspring. And these hybrids were called the Nephilim, the giants. Okay, that roamed the earth. That's that is in God's holy word. How can you deny these truths? These things happen. And if these were hybridized creatures that God did not intend. God never intended for angels to be mixing with humans. And so what they were creating was hybrid offspring. That, that was Satan's agenda to destroy God's per, pure, perfect creations, right? And so that's what the whole flood of Noah was about. God wiped out all this abominations that was going on in that region. It was not a global flood. It was in that region. But anyway, Aliens. So they dig up these these skulls and all these things that they can't explain. The little people, or some of them ain't even little. There's all types of sizes, really. We don't. I, I can't tell you what they look like. Do they have big heads? Do they have little heads? Do they have ten toes? Do they have two toes? I don't know. Are they green? I don't know. I can't tell you these because I've never seen one in person. But they've dug up uh, artifacts and skulls, and and like I said, when they dig up these. 
uh, burial sites and, and living quarters of these uh, civilizations that lived prior to 13, 14,000 years ago. And prior to seven, six, seven thousand years ago when God created Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. What they're digging up, my friends, is is remnants of, and depending on context now, and I'm going to have to make another video, it's either remnants of the mankind that God created, which were on earth before Adam and Eve, or if you go back far enough, it's remnants of these hybridized creatures uh, that, um, that Satan was doing during the first earth age. You see, I believe God created not humans, but he created some type of humanoid race of people during the first earth age. And they were not humans because God created humans after the image of Jesus Christ his very first material first uh, creation, his image, in other words, um, on day, you know, during the, the Genesis account, creation account. So anything that existed before them was not humans, was not us, was not made in his image. But I believe he did make some kind of humanoid, okay, monkey type, semi-intelligent creatures that existed during that time. Uh, the Neander, not just the Neanderthal, yeah, Neanderthal type, the missing link type things that they can't explain, right? I believe God did create some of these, but I also know for a fact, and this is not only coming out of knowing what Satan's agenda is and what he's been doing, and as it's described in the Bible, but I've people like me, we've read the ancient Sumerian, Akkadian, Babylonian. Um, text. You see the, the 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 Hittites and the Canaanites and the Canaanites. We've read, uh, you know, all their their history and their point of view. And the thing about it, if you understand everything in accurate context, it lines up perfectly with what the Bo Holy Bible says. It's just they're they're coming. The Holy Bible is the good Israelite, true met person of God point of view. But all these other are the pagan secular point of view but the timeline the events that they describe still line up perfectly satan is described as as having an army of people who were purposely hybridizing god's creature uh, creations during this first earth age my friends that is described in their writings he goes by different names i'm not gonna go into all that but it's talking about lucifer the fallen angel he has been doing this since the beginning okay hybridizing creating these impure creations with a goal of creating a race you know he wants to be like god right that's the thing he's so jealous he wants all he wants to be able to look down at all these things that he's created and take pride in it and know that they're worshiping him it's you know it's all about his ego and his whatever that's what this so he's wanting to take god's because he cannot create anything on his own that's the thing satan Angels, they don't, only God can do that. He can, Satan cannot say, let it be and it becomes. No, that's, Satan has to, to use the elements that God's already made. And so that's why he is so determined to hybridize God's pure creations. Because that's the only thing he can play with. And with his agenda to form races of people who idolize and respect and honor him instead of the true God, the true Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You see, that's what it's all about. He wants to be above God, like God and above God. You understand? Like God because he wants to be able to create and above God because he wants to be honored above God. That's his, that's always been his agenda. And so all these creations that God made, Satan come along behind him hybridizing and trying to corrupt. And with these corrupt creations always come bad side effects. They're either evil minded, evil spirited, they have uh, grotesque deformalities that, that causes pain and suffering that should not be. You see, that's, that's, but, but Satan takes glory in that because he, he feels like he's accomplished his mission. But, um, and so knowing, knowing all this, right? Aliens, they're not fallen angels, so what are they? Well, they're some of the creatures that, that Satan has hybridized over the years. Working on Satan's team, they can communicate with Satan. They, they know him and they know his army of fallen angels in the bottomless pit and they can communicate to him back and forth through the spirit realm in this bottomless pit. They, they are his army working for him 
while he's locked in prison, in other words, right? Uh, and, and they're the creatures that he hybridized. And I'm going to say it's a theory of mine that, that maybe somehow the Bible, the Bible does not say this. Now, I'm going to say this real clear. The Bible does not say that anyone survived the destruction of the, of the first earth age, except for, of course, the angels, fallen angels, the heavenly realms, right? Um, but um, when I'm reading and what I've read in a lot of these ancient Akkadian texts, when they talk about the Anunnaki, and, which are the fallen angels, right? Um, I see that um, they, they tell stories of creatures, not man, but creatures, humanoid creatures who survived the first earth age. The destruction of the first earth age leading to the second earth age in other words who, who survived the global flood and the ice age the bible does not say this at all unless we it helps us to understand who certain people are later on or certain things are later on creatures whatever but um i'm only getting this information from what these extra biblical sources say so it's a you know it, it's a theory in other words we don't know if that actually happened but it kind of makes sense and it ties in. It would it would help explain these aliens that we have today. They're not fallen angels, so what are they? Well, they're these 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 creatures that Satan hybridized uh, from the first Earth Age, and um, he somehow I don't know. They 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 may have survived, and that's what we see now. You know, the schools that we, and all these weird things that we dig up are theirs, but, you know, their ancestors, in other words. And and since they're hybridized and they have part, fall, that's the thing. Angels have the ability, even fallen angels have the ability to go in and out of the spirit realm, right? Not heaven, but the spirit realm. Um, so if he's hybridizing and he's mixing angel DNA, which is what he was doing, with God's pure creatures, animals or whatever, and today humans. We'll get on that on another video. Um, so whatever he's mixing it with, if it works right, it's going to give that entity that, that he's hybridized uh, the ability to go in and out of the spirit realm. And I believe that's what these aliens are. These aliens are, they have the ability to go in and out of the spiritual realm and to communicate directly with Satan and the fallen angels who are locked up in the bottomless pit and they're taking orders from, from them. And so since they have that ability, I believe maybe that's how they survived the first, the destruction of the first earth age. And, and you see that would kind of help tie and explain everything. But irregardless, you know, like I said, I have to put a theory on that. It makes sense, but irregardless, these creatures do exist. We do find skulls and everything that look a lot like what these